Hi, in this video I am going to be talking about what is uh, robust regression and when do we use uh, robust regression. We'll first uh, learn what robust regression is all about. We'll have a brief, uh, I'll give a brief overview of what theory behind uh, robust regression and then we'll take an example uh, and we'll solve it using SAS. So that's the agenda. Uh, so what is robust regression? Robust regression is used when there are too many outliers in the data. Uh, now you know that if a data has too many outliers, it is not a suitable data for statistical modeling. Uh, most statistical models will have problems when you have outliers in your data. Outliers are nothing but the uh, extreme observations or observations which are completely different from the uh, rest of the observation. So there are always a few outliers in your data. Okay. So when there are too many outliers, when there are too many outliers, the least square degradation or the ordinary least square degradation model is not suitable to use uh, because under the influence of outliers, uh, ordinary least square degradation will give biased result. So that's one important point to remember that when you have, when you have uh, the outliers in your data, uh, your results are going to be biased, which cannot be interpreted. Hence, uh, you need to you need to find a way how you deal with that. So robust regression uh, overcomes this influence of extreme observations. So you can use robust regression in place of ordinary least square regression when you have you know too many outliers in your data. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, basic use of robust regression. It is an is a special case of OLS regression when you have odd, uh, too many outliers in your data. Question is, why don't we remove outliers? Like it is, you know, recommended in many statistical modeling exercises that you should remove outliers or deal with them before going ahead with uh, modeling. Well, sometimes it is important to keep outliers in your data. You can't remove them. And there are many reasons. Sometimes there is a restriction that you cannot, uh, you know, remove, uh, you know, you can, cannot remove every data. Um, and then uh, sometimes if you remove some of these data points, it will reduce the sample size, okay, which is not a good thing because if you lose the sample size, if you have a smaller sample size, you have a lesser uh, degree of freedom, right? And that is not good for uh, your estimation. So from the estimation point of view, removing outliers many times is not good, especially in small sample uh, study. Okay. Um, hence, robust regression is, is an alternative use. So, you know, um, so robust regression um, is not always used. It is only used when you cannot use out, uh, you cannot remove outliers. You know, many times you can actually go ahead and remove outliers. In in those cases, you need not use robust regression, but only when you have the restriction of, uh, you know, uh, you know, having all the data points in your data, then you know, robust regression is good when you have you know, too many outliers. So we'll take this data to you know use robust regression on this and we'll see how is it different from the ordinary least square regression and how do we interpret the results and, and so on. So this is the data on crime um, records on, on different states in United States and we've got several variables. We're not going to use all of them. Um, so here is the uh, explanation for all the data, all the variables we have in our data. So we are only interested in crime. That means uh, the violent crimes per lakhs of people, the rate of crime, and, and few. So we were to predict how rate of crime depends on, you know, poverty is, uh, is somebody uh, having single parents and, and so on, percentage of white people, uh, percentage of people living in metropolitan cities and so on. So, you know, this is a, a, a very popular data on crime uh, on different U.S. states. So first we'll do is... Um, we learn an ordinary least square regression and we will um, we'll keep the results and then we will um, use robust regression 
and we'll then compare the results from OLS regression with that of the robust regression and we will see what the differences are. We'll use PROC REG in um, SAS and the data set is CRIME and uh, we're using two independent variables poverty and single and the dependent variable is CRIME. Um, so there are a few things that we also want in, uh, in apart from the normal, uh, you know, um, the uh, statistics, I mean, the, the estimates and other things. We also want the residuals, so that's important to us. We're also getting the Cook D. Uh, so Cook D is nothing but um, a measure for outliers. See, you know, it helps, it's just a statistics which helps you finding uh, outliers. And we're also finding the leverage, right? If you're not familiar with what Cook D, um, Cook distance and, and uh, leverage statistic, you know, are, you could always, you know, uh, go and, and check in, in, in Wikipedia. There is a clear definition of what this, uh, you know, statistics means. So basically, these two statistics are used uh, in order to find out um, the outlier. This is uh, some sort of a distance. Uh, you know, distance uh, matrix or distance um, between the outliers and the rest of the observation so that, you know, it helps using, it helps finding out some of these outliers and then you can, you know, remove them or deal with them. Fine. And we'll also plot it, right? We'll, we'll plot the leverage just to know how many outliers we have. So when we run this code, we have these outliers, right? And we can clearly visualize them that you know these are some of the outliers uh, so that's one way of uh, you know uh, locating the outliers the other way is to use the cook distance okay so we use the cook distance so the thumb up rule uh, the thumb rule is that um, if the cook distance is greater than 4 by 51 then uh, it is considered to be an outlier okay um, and we found that there are four observations which are uh, meeting this criteria so four observations are uh, supposedly the um, the outliers which which uh, require um, some sort of a treatment before they can uh, be used in the estimation process however you know we can actually remove them but given this is a small sample of 51 observations it is not a good you know good practice to review this observation and then go ahead with OLS um, we rather can use um, the robust regression, which uh, which uh, is fine even if you have you know outliers. Okay, so most statistics from the OLS we have the R square of seventy percent and, and and so on. And um, okay, so just one variable is significant. Uh, the single parent is significant, and and poverty is not a significant variable. So that's the result from the ordinary square regressions. Now let's go to um, you know, let's uh, try to find the results from the robust regression. Okay, so you can also plot the residuals from the OLS regressions, and you can see that some of the residuals are you know far away from um, you know the other residuals. So there's a presence of outlier. That's what it confirms. All right. Um, Another reason why uh, you know outliers are problems uh, is because when outliers as they are in your data, uh, there is a lot of violation of uh, the least square um, you know regressions. Okay, um, so there are so many um, so many violations that happens. Like you know in OLS you have this um, you know assumption of random error distribution. Uh, and, and the error distribution should not follow any pattern um, and then they should you know be ideally be distributed uh, uniformly across this x axis but you know in the presence of outliers it these violations actually uh, you know this this assumption gets violated okay uh, you can see some of these outliers or these error terms are you know completely um, different from the rest of the observations that means they do not um, they do not uniformly uh, are distributed uh, around this x-axis. So that's another reason uh, why outliers are going to create problems in OLS and you know hence interpretation is different or difficult. So we'll use robust regression okay and um, we'll use proc uh, robust rig uh, in SAS to uh, 
do the estimation. Okay, um, we'll use the same independent variables, two independent variables, and prime is the dependent variable. All right. So when we run this, we will get this output. We have we have the you know parameter estimates here also. We can see uh, that you know just one variable is uh, significant. I, I guess so. Yes, only single is a, a significant port is not. So the result from OLAs and robust you know says pretty much the same. But what are the differences then? And we'll see what the differences are. Okay, so when you look at the uh, statistics, the diagnostic statistics, you will see that we have R square, pretty much the way we had R square in OLS. But the R square in robust regression is not similar to what the R square was in OLS. So if this is, uh, there is no way you can actually find out R square in a non OLS regression. Okay. Um, but this R square is somewhat similar, but not exactly. Um, you know, it, it's it's not same uh, to be to be very you know frank. It, it's, it's some sort of an um, you know some sort of an adjustment that is made uh, to the formula in order to you know in order to be um, uh, you know good enough to use for reverse regression. But the interpretation is not the same. You cannot say that you know the percentage of variation in in y variable is. Uh, explain 52% by the set of x variables. That's not the way you can interpret this. So you cannot actually compare this R square values. No, there are other ways you can actually, of course, use. If you are using a prediction problem, uh, you can. Uh, if this is, you know, primarily for crime prediction, you can use the root mean square error in your data set, right? And and then compare. So the other matrix is that you can actually com use to compare these two models. Okay. Um, for the, uh, every observations you you have, you know, weight. So we are. We, you remember in the code we have used this weight. That means, um, okay. So I just uh, I just uh, you know missed out one point in the theory. So I'm going to give it to you now. So okay, the theory that we haven't covered yet. Okay, let's you know cover that part before we move ahead. So so what happens in in uh, let's say this is the data point distribution of data points, and these are some of the outliers, right? In ordinary square regressions, the normal data, you know, is considered that most of the observations are normal, right? More uh, general in nature. So the weight in the estimation, the weight given to all observations in the estimation process is same. Whereas in robust regression, the outliers are given less weight. So, okay, the outlier given a less weight in the estimation. That means the contribution by the outliers in your estimation process is much less compared to the uh, observations which are not outliers, right? And um, it depends on the Cook's distance as to which one will have the higher weight, highest weight and so on. So the best observation will have the most um, weight in the estimation process and it will go down uh, depending on um, you know, if the outliers are, if, if the data points are outliers or not. If they are, then the weight will be less. Okay. Or the weight is given in an estimation process will be less. So when you find the weight, you can see that, uh, you know, as you go down, uh, the weight uh, given to this out, you know, these good observations is actually more. Uh, and to the bad observation is actually less, right? You can see different weights given, right? And this is exactly what, um, you know, exactly what uh, is the difference between OLS and robust regression. So in OLS, your weight will be nothing but one by the number of observations, right? That is exactly the weight. Whereas in robust regression, it will vary a lot. You can see, um, Okay, so you can see the weight um, given to the first observation is 0.28, but the next observation is 0 0.35, 0 0.59, and so on. It is different. And some observations, it has been taken a weight of 1, which is the highest, right? Whereas in OLS, it is all uniform. The weight is exactly the same. Probably, you can either say that, you know, it's the average, or maybe you can say the weight is 1 for, you know, all the observations, okay? So that's the way um, 
the two uh, types of regressions are different so how do we uh, how do we uh, make a conclusion out of it now we have seen that the results in the out output hasn't been very different from what we have seen in OLS however in many instances you will find differences we haven't taken many independent variables if you have a bunch of independent variables some of the independent variables which are not significant in the OLS with the presence of outliers will come significant in robust integration however uh, there is another interpretations uh, another uh, you know good thing about using robust regression uh, even in this case where you know the results are not very dissimilar or not very different is that you can interpret your uh, results in a better manner in the robust regression but you know it is difficult to interpret in the same way in in, in the presence of OLS where you have, you have outliers you haven't removed them OLS you know you have whether it's R square, whether it's all the statistics and the significance level, it is difficult to interpret that. But in a robust regression, you can easily or very comfortably interpret all the statistics. Okay, so that's one of the primary difference or reasons why robust regression is used. Now, what are the uses, real world uses, right? We always worry about, well, you know, theory is fine, but what the real world uses are. Well, I can tell you one example in finance where you know robust regression or robust statistics are, are very um, you know finding a lot of popularity. You know, in finance there are some rare incidents where you know you have some incidents which are totally different from uh, a set of other inc inc incidents which which are pretty normal. And in finance, this extreme observation cannot be uh, you know removed uh, from data I mean, but that's important like financial crisis let's say 2000 finance eight financial crisis so that's an incident which doesn't happen every year right so that's an outlier all that has happened in 2007 and 8 in finance is is, is an outlier in your data if you do an analysis uh, in the later years right but will you be able to remove them? No, because these data points on you know in a crisis period are actually very important. So how do you deal with uh, them? Uh, well, the normal uh, statistics is, is not going to help you much because you know that will require you to remove uh, observations which fall in these two years, seven and eight. Whereas robust statistics will you know help you you know estimating without. Um, you know, having to uh, remove the outliers or, or these observations which are considered to be uh, rare or extreme or, or observations which do not occur, uh, uh, you know, um, in, in a normal time period, in a normal situation. All right. Thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to